1620, while the Mayflower was in Provincetown, 18 of its men sailed in a small shallop, searching for a place to live. They came to present-day East Ham, where they were met by a group of Nosset. After a brief but violent encounter, the English left towards today's Plymouth. In 2020, we remember this first encounter. We explore its meanings for today and tomorrow. The following text comes from our website, eastham400.org, the village of Nosset. Prior to European colonization, the region we know today as Lower Cape Cod, including Eastham, was called Nosset one of 69 villages of the historic Wampanoag Nation. The people of Nauset chose that place for the same reasons citizens of East Ham live here today, access to open ocean and bay. In those days, fishing and whaling were important to sustain the village. The endless beaches were for recreation, to be refreshed in the ocean waters and gather shellfish along the shore and in coastal estuaries. This is also a place of many ponds and freshwater springs necessary for drinking, cooking, and farming. The following text comes from the National Park Service website, the Nauset Archaeological District, East Ham. The Nauset Archaeological District, within the southern portion of Cape Cod National Seashore, was one focus of substantial ancient settlements since at least 4000 BC. Indians at Nauset Harbor practicing far practiced farming and fishing. Farming was simple, using stone hoes and fire-hardened wood tools to work the soil, but rewarding. French explorers and the early English settlers report crop surpluses. In fact, the early pilgrim settlers purchased corn and other crop foods from the Nauset Indians during the early years of their settlement at Plymouth, just across Cape Cod Bay. One of the means of fishing can be seen in the upper right corner of the map of Nauset by Champlain, which shows a conical weir constructed of saplings and grass rope designed to capture fish swimming from the marsh into a pond. Radiocarbon dating and information indicating the season in which different species were collected or hunted, based on studies of the shellfish and other faunal remains from ancient shell middens, indicate that people lived here year-round. The first written account of the area was by Samuel de Champlain, who sailed in, on July 21st, 1605, and saw a bay with wigwams bordering it all around. He went ashore with some of the crew. Quote, Before reaching the Indians' wigwams, we entered a field planted with Indian corn, which was in flower and some five and a half feet in height. We saw Brazilian beans, many edible squashes, tobacco, and roots which they cultivate. End quote. He also described the round wigwams covered by a thatch made of reeds and the people's clothing woven from grasses, hemp, and animal skins. As the expedition cartographer, Champlain has left us an informative map of the Nauset Harbor area. Unfortunately, the visit to Nauset ended after four days with a fight between the French and the Indians in which one Frenchman was killed. When he returned the next year, Champlain recorded in his journal that about 150 people were living around Nosset Harbor and about 500 to 600 were living around Stage Harbor to the south in the area of present-day Chatham. After 1620, English colonists from the settlement at Plymouth visited Nosset many times to buy food and trade. Unfortunately, along with the trade goods, European diseases for which the Indians had no immunity were spread by these contacts. Many of the Nauset Indians died and the population declined drastically. In 1639, about half the English from Plymouth relocated to the Nauset area, settling the town that is now East Ham. The area can be visited via the Fort Hill area off Route 6, East Ham, where the Fort Hill and Red Maple Swamp trails wind from the top of the hill to the marsh and beyond. Visitors can view interpretive displays of the area at the Salt Pond Visitor Center at the corner of Route 6 and Nauset Road, East Ham. Additional trails from the Visitor Center to Coast, Be Coast Guard Beach pass by other ancient archaeological sites. The sites around Nauset March, like most archaeological sites on the, in the eastern part of the country, are hidden from view by soil and vegetation. 
This protects the sites, but it also makes it difficult for visitors to envision ancient settlements. At Nauset, the Champlain map suggests how houses and cultivated fields must have filled the margins of land around the marsh in pre-European times. The view from the top of Fort Hill overlooking the modern marsh takes in all of Nauset Harbor, with its steep shorelines and extensive marsh divided by natural channels. Beyond the harbor are the breakers of the Atlantic Ocean. Nauset Beach, a barrier beach with a narrow entrance, protects the tidal lagoon. The following text comes from a 1933 newspaper clipping on our website, eastam400.org. Old Indian Graves Found in East Ham. The skeletons of six Nauset Indians, uncovered by ERA workers along Hemingway Road in East Ham during the last week or two, may find a final resting place under the glass at the Peabody Museum at Harvard College. A party of Harvard scientists, headed by Carlton Coons, Harvard archaeologist, arrived last Friday to begin excavations on the hill where the relics and a number of stone weapons were found not far from the buried site of an aboriginal camp. East Dam is the center of the region where the ancient Nossets held sway before the coming of the white man. Evidences of Indian life are abundant, but such finds as the one made here last week are rare. The hill which will be the center of the museum's parties, museum party's activities overlooks Nosset Harbor and is a few hundred yards from a rock which bears the gouges of flint weapons sharpened on the weathered sandstone by generations of red men. The Nossets of East Ham figure prominently in early pilgrim history. It was on the bay shore of the town that Miles Standish and his party from the Mayflower at Anchor at Provincetown were first in armed conflict with the natives. It was Aspinet, a Nosset Sagamore, who returned Francis Billington to Plymouth after the boy had run away from the colony. The following text, a summary of the Nosset Archaeological District, comes from our website, istam400.org. Over the years, the colonization and development of the region have disturbed traces of the remains of the Wampanoag people. Since 1930, several archaeological sites have been documented in East Ham. The treatment of the graves and belongings of the Wampanoag people were not always treated with respect, and repatriation remains a goal shared by the Wampanoag people and many of the museums that archive the findings. My name is Joanna Hollick, and I'm the coordinator of the Sunset Series with East Ham 400. Thank you again for your support of this series. If you're interested in participating in other series that are happening locally this summer, there is an upcoming concert series. The first concert will be held on July 6th at 7 p.m. at the East Ham Windmill. There will be grids that are created in the grass to help people maintain social distancing, and everybody above the age of three is required to wear a mask. Within the grids, people will be able to dance and enjoy the music. So we invite you to come to these concerts and to appreciate the beautiful historical landmark that is the East Ham Windmill. Thank you.